Now today, September the 7th, is World Field Epidemiology Day, a day to spare a moment to remember and honour the men and women who take a frontline role in fighting infectious diseases. From sounding the early alarm to following the impact of new variants, we can all testify to the professionalism, compassion and commitment of field epidemiologists in fighting everything from the COVID pandemic to cholera and numerous other outbreaks. Here in Nigeria, the African Field Epidemiology Network is using the day to try to raise awareness of the vital role of field epidemiologists in protecting the health of populations and to advocate for increased investment in field epidemiology training and research. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the epidemiologist and medical microbiologist, Mohamed Shakir Balogun from the African Field Epidemiology Network. If I say epidemiology one more time, I'm going to bite my tongue. <laughs> but thank you very much indeed for coming in. Um, tell us more about field epidemiologists. You're the guys on the front lines of fighting disease, aren't you? Sure. So field epidemiology, uh, as the name implies, is epidemiology that takes place in the field. And what is epidemiology? Epidemiology is the basic science of public health. You know, it's based on the insight that diseases don't occur at random. There's usually a pattern and there are factors that drive the occurrence of disease. So we are charged with the responsibility of discerning the patterns finding the factors so we can apply the knowledge in disease control and prevention. So it's not an academic exercise. It's a very practical thing. It's done in the field. Mm. That's why uh, it's also known as applied epidemiology or better still, interventional epidemiology. We want to know so we can act. Mm. Those are a lot of big words there, aren't they? But sure. I mean, that does not in any way um, reduce the importance of the work that you do i mean with regard to things like covid19 for for example i mean you're the guys who do the detective work of things like i suppose contact tracing sure. finding super spreaders super spreading events uh, you know um identifying coronavirus clusters stopping them from spreading further that type of thing sure so th so that's what we do and um i think you can summarize all we do in three words. We prevent, we detect, and we respond. So the primary thing is to try to prevent the occurrence of these outbreaks in the first place. But if despite all your efforts, they do occur, to detect them on time so you can reduce excess illness and deaths. Mm. And finally, to respond quickly so that we can prevent a disaster from happening. But that obviously puts you in the line of fire, doesn't it? Sure, it does. And, um, you know, I think the same thing applies in um, crime detectives, just like you have disease detectives, you have crime detectives. So crime detectives don't wait for a crime to happen. They are constant, you know, constantly monitoring things, looking out for the hotspots for crimes all over the place. We also look for hotspots for diseases. Actually, we do something called hotspot mapping. Mm. We want to know where diseases are most likely to occur so we can preposition materials, so we can fix our attention there and the moment something happens, we react very, very, very quickly. And um, using the same paradigm, the same analogy of crime you know, uh, um, d detection and, and, and prevention, when you know, a criminal is found, people go in straight. So if you try, you've tried all your best to prevent a crime from happening, the moment mm. it occurs, you want to investigate. And that's what we call field you know, investigation. You go out there, you don't stay in your office, you probably have analyzed data and you feel something's happening in Kano or Sokoto, but you really want to put your boots on the ground to mm. know what exactly is happening there. And that's why you say field epidemiology. It's not an academic thing. We have to be out there where it's exactly happening. So vigilance is, is a key critical, word, isn't it? I mean, sure. And, and the fact that, I mean, when we hear all these stories about, you know, the Delta variant, mm -hmm. and, you know, whether it's come to Nigeria or not, or a cholera outbreak, it's you guys who go out there, find it, and then report back, back to sort of NCDC and all the rest of it. Sure. So what we do uh, is basically surveillance, just, you know, as the word implies, mm. we are constantly watching what is happening to diseases. Are we having more cases of Lassa fever? Are we having more cases of cholera? Have we reached the epidemic threshold so we can act? 
So we are constantly, systematically collecting information so we can act. Mm. So we have people, we don't, epidemiologists are all over the place, not just in Abuja, we have epidemiologists at the state level as well, people who have trained in our program and are working hard to look out for diseases and act on time. So we have people in the LGAs called the Disease Surveillance and Notification Officers. Those people are truly on the front lines of detecting diseases. But how do you do that? I mean, for example, if you're in a local government or somewhere, um, yeah. how do you go about finding if, I mean, you, you just monitor everybody in every hospital? Is that what you so do? We and have then say, that's a bit unusual. Let's investigate it further. Yeah, so we have um, case definitions. So these is, case definitions are sets of criteria for telling what is happening. Is it cholera or is it measles? Mm. And if it's measles, what do we need to do? So we take information, we take samples, we want to confirm. And once we confirm, we want to act. So those people are there, they're very close to the people, they're in the community, they're in the health facilities. So these, you know, the data that we're interested in actually originates in the community as mm. well as in the health facilities. So they, they are the ones that collect data. We have them in all the 774 local government areas. And um, beyond them, we also have people who are community informants. You know, in case people don't go to the hospital, they don't report to the health facilities, those people can still detect things. Mm. There are people that go to meet bone setters. There are people that meet medicine, meet medicine vendors. Those people are also very important in collecting the kind of information that we need. So when people, re we tell them, when people report with certain symptoms, please let us know. It might just be, mm. you know, this particular disease that is epidemic prone. Absolutely. It, it must be very frustrating for you, though, with all your epidemiology, knowledge of detection, investigation, all of that. Then you go and investigate, and, and most of the hospitals are ill-equipped to deal with some of the, the issues that people have to face. Or is that a different kettle of fish sure. for you? Because <laughs> your job is to find it and report it, and then someone else takes over from that. Sure. So, so, so the, the the, um, the efforts of um, the field epidemiologists, you know, and the impact they mm. make on the system is as good as the system itself. So if you detect an outbreak but you don't have people to manage the cases, it's almost like a waste of time. You don't does have that doctors. happen a lot in Nigeria? It does happen from time to time. You know, you, there's a huge outbreak. We don't have enough people, particularly in the rural areas. Mm. I was telling somebody today that um, we have a serious maldistribution of healthcare workers in Nigeria. Most of the doctors are concentrated in the cities. You move to the villages, you don't find anybody. And when people start dying there, sometimes you don't hear what is happening in Abuja or in, in the state capitals on time. And sometimes you have politics. Government always wants to cover up Absolutely. you know, outbreaks because it's like a slap on their faces. It's a disgrace to have outbreaks of cholera in this age and time. So the initial instinct is to want to cover up. But as far as disease surveillance and disease control is concerned, you always want to know the truth because the truth will so set you free. Absolutely. If you don't admit you have a problem, then you can solve the problem. That's a very good point. And, and things like vaccine hesitancy, I mean, do, do, does that fall under your purview? Is it your job to try to reassure people who are yes. hesitant that vaccines yes. are so okay? Sure, because we do a lot of work at a grassroots, at a community level. Mm. So we engage the community leaders in order to reach out to people and um, pass out the correct message about vaccines mm. and other medications and the rest of that. So you have all sorts of misinformation spreading around, rumors, conspiracy theories. We really need to fight these things, otherwise we can't get, otherwise we can't get our work done. Absolutely. So it takes more than epidemiology to succeed in um, public health. Mm. You also need to, un to be culturally you know, uh, intelligent as well. You need Absolutely. to understand the people around you, what are their fears, what are their worries, what are their concerns. If you don't address those things, they will not accept the intervention you've brought to them. Mm. So we're really, really interested in that. So when we train our people, we make sure they're culturally competent. We bring in those other things that are not strictly speaking scientific, but that are very, very important for the success of the programs and interventions that we design. Very interesting. So given your field knowledge when it comes to infectious disease, how is Nigeria coping with the coronavirus pandemic in general and the more infectious Delta variant in particular? Well, I would say that um, we're not doing so badly mm. given the um, economic capability of the country. The state but are those of numbers accurate that we're getting? Uh, those numbers reflect um, the people that seek 
healthcare and they get tested and we report. Mm. So um, there was a time we were trying to ramp up the testing and we went into the communities, you know, just to look for people in you know, active case search instead of waiting for people to report in the hospital. But we didn't really find, you know, excessive numbers the way we expected. So I think even if the numbers are not exactly accurate, they are quite close to the truth. Because there was a time when I was in Lagos, I spent like three months in Lagos in the early days of the outbreak to support the response in Lagos. And we did active case search in the community. We went to facilities, hundreds of homes and facilities, thousands of homes actually, and many facilities. We really couldn't find so many cases mm. of But um, what do you think corona. is responsible for that? I mean, that seems to be almost a scientific mystery. Sure. Because investigations have been done, questions that is very have been true. asked. You're an epidemiologist. Sure. What do you think is the reason yeah. for that? So th the moment um, a new virus or mm. a pathogen, a disease-causing bug emerges, it's um, several steps ahead of us. We don't know so many things about it. We are still learning about this coronavirus itself. Mm. And um, biologically, we may know the full sequence, but epidemiologically, what happens in the community in terms of transmission? It takes a while before we're able to you know, unravel you know, the secret. So we're still learning, and um, a lot of experts have been you know, confounded by what is happening in Africa. People predicted that we're going to have people in the streets, mm -hmm. a lot of dead bodies. It, it, it actually didn't happen. Absolutely. So a, a number of theories have, been, you know, uh, um, have come up to try to explain the situation. People have talked about the climate, people have talked about previous exposure mm. to other coronaviruses that are you know, sort of offering uh, cross Some protection, protection right. against uh, what okay. we are witnessing now. So I think um, it's multifactorial, you know, a lot of factors. Are, right. are, are, okay. are, are, well, Mohamed Shakir Balogan from the African Field Epidemiology Network, I want to thank you very much indeed. Very interesting, and congratulations on World Field Epidemiology. Thank you very much for having me.